In this video, we are going to talk about the five things to look for in a 3D scanner. Now, the first thing you should really do is ask yourself some questions. Um, and we'll then get into what we think are the five most important characteristics of a 3D scanner. But you really need to look at things like, what are the size of the parts that you want a 3D scan? Are you primarily doing very small parts? Uh, do you do medium-sized parts or large parts? Are you doing very large parts? Or do you want to be able to do a combination of, of small and large or small and medium? So you really want to look at the size of the parts you want a 3D scan. Secondly, what type of parts are they? Are they basic shapes? Are they very organic? Are they very complex with lots of features and holes? Um, are they extremely shiny or are they, you know, very dark or multicolored or translucent? Um, so, you know, what do the parts look like? And then what environment will you be working in? Are you in a nice air conditioned lab? Do you need to go out on the shop floor? Are you in maybe a very harsh environment that might be dirty? or noisy, or a lot of vibration, or dust, or extreme temperatures? Uh, are you going to be going outside where you might be in direct sunlight or in weather? So all those types of things should be looked at. Also, do you need to travel with the scanner? Uh, do you need to ship it uh, overseas or across the country? Uh, uh, do you need to travel with it in your car? Um, or is it going to be in the, you know, the same room all the time, or do you maybe need to move it around in uh, different areas of your facility? So, you know, that's a, something important. And then how valuable is this 3d scanner to you? Not just the initial cost, but you know, what is the value of owning it? Would you, uh, use it more? Uh, do you currently outsource a lot of services? Um, or would it just be a kind of nice thing to have? So, you know, how, how, mu how many issues would a, or problems can a 3D scanner solve for you will really dictate its value. And then who's going to be using the system? Um, do you have experienced CAD operators? Do you have metrologists already? Um, or do you have people uh, that maybe you know, work on the shop floor that are machinists that can read a drawing? Or do they understand GD&T? You know, things like that. What is, this, what is the skill level uh, of the people that are going to use it? What applications are you looking at? Do you just need to do reverse engineering? Do you need to also do inspection? Are you doing maybe a, just a lot of probing, um, you know, basic measurements? Or are you doing full uh, GD&T, uh, you know, very advanced? Um, what about training and service and support? Do you have local service and support? Uh, what, again, is the skill level? Yeah, how much ongoing support do you think you need? Does it make sense to purchase one or just outsource it as a service? That gets a little bit back to the, the value. And then do I already own a scanner? Would another one complement it? Or is the one I have uh, old and outdated? Um, so those are, the, those are the type of initial questions you really should ask yourself. And we've got a, at the end here, we'll show kind of a, a chart where you can rate uh, some of these things in order. And we'll, we'll show that. So let's start and take a look at the five things we think are the most important things. And probably the first one that questions always come up is on accuracy. What is the accuracy of the scanner? Um, and that's, you know, not always an easy question to answer. But one thing right away is there's always seems to be a lot of confusion about accuracy and resolution. Um, you'll see numbers posted on brochures and websites, and they're not the, they're not the same thing. Um, so let's show an example of what we mean by that. So if you take a look at this, it's obviously very faceted. Uh, and let's pretend this is scan data. Scan data is basically 3D triangles or faceted triangles. Um, if you looked at that and that was supposed to represent a circle, um, most people would look at that and say, well, that's not very accurate. Um, but let's go ahead and fit a circle through there. And if we looked at those intersection points, it actually be, may be very accurate. It may have a low resolution, but if those uh, vertices, you know, touch the, 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 the circle there, um, you could say that's highly accurate, even though the resolution is uh, maybe not very high. Um, so let's take a look at that circle again and fit 
a something that's more faceted, more you know, more segments. Um, but it doesn't fit right. It may look better on the on the computer screen, but it may not be accurate. So you can't just say because of the resolution or because it looks better, it's more accurate, uh, and um, and vice versa. So th- that's one thing to kind of keep in mind. You really have to t- keep the two separated. Resolution is really fidelity. It's not necessarily accuracy. So it could look good, but it may not be that accurate. So keep that in mind. Also, something to think about is accuracy and precision equal repeatability. So if you take a look at this chart with precision along the bottom going to the right and trueness or accuracy going up, and you look at the sampling of points, you can see in the bottom left, the points are all over the place. So the precision, which is really repeatability, is not very good, and the accuracy is not very good. Um, going up to the left, the the accuracy is better, but again, not very precise. If you look to the bottom right, you've got very good precision, but not a, but not accurate. So it's really the combination of accuracy and precision, really repeatability. Okay, and you, this is where you get into a lot of gauge R and R studies and things like that. We're not going to go into that. A lot of companies do their own uh, to prove some of this stuff out. But you really got to look at that. Again, you can look at accuracy numbers, but they don't tell you repeatability. Um, That could be a one-time deal. Can you repeat that with multiple uh, systems of the same, multiple people, multiple environments? There's a lot of things in there. Um, But you really got to look closely at some of this. So what you really need to do is look at what is a realistic accuracy you can live with. Um, If you look at this chart here, uh, this is very general rule of thumb, but if you wanted to scanner you know, accurate within 100 microns versus 50 versus 25 versus 10, you can see that they get they get exponentially more expensive. Um, And this is just a general guideline, but you can basically expect to pay more for higher accuracy. Um, You know, the other thing is accuracy changes over part size. So what is the real accuracy? You've got to look closely at how the scanner accuracy is measured. So when you get Uh, you know, a calibration report uh, from the manufacturer. What are they measuring? What volume? Is it a 2D measurement? Are they doing a 3D volumetric calibration? What do those numbers look like? Um, You know, do some real world testing and measure some things in the real world, some known artifacts and test out the scanner under real world conditions, not in a perfect lab. If you're out primarily working on a shop floor with noise and vibration and heat and humidity. Um, that's where you should do some testing and try to get some numbers because that's the real world. That's what you're going to be working in. So you really got to look at how they come up with their accuracy statements, what they did to get them. Also, what certifications do the manufacturer have? You know, are they ISO certified ASA? There's lots of different standards out there. Um, which ones do they follow in their manufacturing process? And, you know, what is the recalibration process for the scanner Um, and how often? Again, the higher the accuracy, the more involved and more expensive the recalibration can be and the longer it can take. So accuracy is important, um, but it's a uh, often misunderstood world. People don't really know the accuracy they get. The accuracy statements don't always reflect the the real world and what you might be measuring. So you really got to look into it and maybe do your own tests. Now, the next thing is speed, and speed just isn't, you know, how many points per second or lines per degree or, you know, things like that. There's a lot more involved in speed of a system. You've got to look at everything. So starting with setup time, you know, if you've got a system that you're going to move around and have to set back up, how long is that assembly process? What is the warm-up time? Some scanners can take 30, 40, 50 minutes just to warm up. Um, How long do they take to calibrate? Some can be very complicated uh, in their calibration uh, process. Uh, Do they require targeting, uh, whether it's 2D targets, 3D spheres, um, SMR nests, you know, things like that. How much setup is there? Do you have to fixture your part? Um, Does the part have to be locked down? Um, That all is, you know, before you even get to scanning. Um, now, as far as scanning, is it a single laser line? Does it have multiple laser lines? How large, if it's a structured light, is the pattern? Um, uh, you know, what about uh, on challenging surfaces? 
A lot of these times will be on a perfectly, uh, you know, flat white part in perfect conditions. But what if you're doing a part that's very shiny or very dark? Um, does that slow down the scanning speed of our, or parts that have high contrast? Um, if you're a hemispherical scanner, what is the, you know, scan for 360 degrees based on what density and range? Those all come into play. Um, and then what about having to reposition the part or the scanner? Um, do you have to, you know, leapfrog around and set up an artifact? Um, do you have to have, you know, more targets? Um, is there software alignments you have to do? Um, you know, so what is the whole process to scan a part um, the, and the entire part all the way around 360 degrees? You really need to look at that and really test out scanners from, you know, starting it and plugging it in and setting it up all the way through to getting a finished scan file aligned, merged, ready to go. What is that entire process? So when we talk about speed, you really look at you really need to look at the whole thing, not just some numbers on a brochure that talk about how many points per second or, or something like that. Another big one that a lot of companies don't look at and sometimes learn the hard way in the end is service and support and really local service and support. Um, can they get local training or on-site training? Is it application specific? Um, uh, and then what about ongoing support? Many customers buy scanners and then have to go to generic training uh, in another state and spend five days learning something that maybe somebody could come in and do their application and do it in a couple of days and, and be very specific. So, you know, what do you want out of training? What do you want out of local support? Um, you know, what about uh, ongoing software updates and firmware updates and what's covered on the hardware? Um, you know, does that include recalibration of the software? Uh, if the system goes down, can they get a loaner system? You know, those are all the things, especially if you're in a production environment, um, you really need to think about. But it really starts with, can you get good local service and support? And, and do they understand your application and how to help you? Um, so don't um, discount service and support as one of the key things you need to look at. Portability and ease of use. Now, not everybody needs necessarily portability, but ease of use and those kind of go hand in hand because it's still all about setup and, and so forth. So how easy is it to break down and or set up your equipment? What is the size and the weight of all the accessories? Do you need a big heavy base or a granite table? You know, what, what are all the things you need to do? Um, how easy is it to use out on the shop floor? Uh, again, uh, those harsh environments, noise, vibration, dust, humidity, you know, direct sunlight, things like that. Um, how easy is the scanner software to work with? Is it, is it easy enough that you can have quite a few different operators run it? Or is it so complex that only one or two people uh, can really use the scanner, really diminishing its value? So yeah, what is that operator skill level? So those all come into play for most customers is how accessible is the equipment to uh, people in your workforce? And then you got to look at overall value. And again, there's certainly the initial investment up front. Um, you know, that's the initial cost. But what is the payback? How often will you use it? How will it solve your problems? You know, does it really work? Does it do a variety of part sizes? Are there more uses for it than you originally thought? Can you use it for reverse engineering and inspection and documentation and, you know, other things? Um, can you, you know, what is the combination of the accuracy, the resolution and the data quality? Um, you can be very accurate, but only collect one point at a time. Um, you can have extremely high resolution, but have very poor accuracy. Um, what is the overall ROI? Um, what about the scanner software? Is it a good value or do you have to buy lots of extra software to run it um, and learn different programs? What is the operator skill level required to, to use it? And how versatile is the scanner? Can you use it for a lot of different applications? So, you know, what is the value proposition of the whole system and really the whole environment, um, you know, working with the system? So just to wrap up, as you do those initial questions and start to ask, you know, what's important to you, I would encourage you to try to rate all those things. So come up with the top five or the top 10 things that are important to you and then try to rate them. Um, if you just said, well, they're all important to me and I'm going to give them all a 10, 
um, you know, that's easy to do, but it doesn't really help you. So we go through an exercise many times and we will work with a customer and we rate everything from 10 being the most important to one being the least. And this can be challenging because for a lot of customers, they're all important, but by forcing uh, the ranking of them, it really is a good exercise. So for example, in this is this, this example here, we put 10 for accuracy and precision as being the most important. Well, typically then number nine cannot be cost, right? Total cost of ownership, because uh, again, uh, those two don't usually uh, go together well. So maybe portability is the second most or ease of use or part size range, or, you know, my parts are all dark and shiny, or I need the flexibility of scanning and probing and reverse engineering. And I don't care how long it takes to set up. And my guys are really smart. So maybe service and support. So this is a great exercise to go through, write the, the top five or 10 things, and then try to rank them. Uh, and that'll help you in your, you know, your process of, of going out and looking at a system um, and, and figuring out what's important. Of course, many of these are important and you really might have two or three that are tens, but just try to force yourself to put them in an order and that'll kind of help you as you start to look around. If you'd like to learn more or, or, or talk more about this, uh, what's important in 3D scanning, I encourage you to give us a call or visit our website or check back here on YouTube as we're always coming up with new videos uh, on subjects to do with 3D scanning, inspection and metrology.